last thing on the plan for today. R. And at the same time, a very important part of descriptive statistics and explorative data analysis, that is visualization. That is actually a very important part of also modern data science, the data visualization part of it. We already saw examples, uh, scatter plots. Uh, yeah, basically, I think that's what we saw so far. There are many other nice plots for you, and you should keep on doing those. You already got started with that in elementary school and in high school. Keep on doing that. You just add on what you learn in this course to that. This is not a vis data visualization course. So I'm not going to teach you to be a million times better at that. I am just encourage you to work on that. Every one of us can, can work on that at the same time. The way we do it, visualization, data, plotting, visualization, explorative data analysis, is by our computer tools. The tool I will share with you is the best tool we have for this. It's called R. The price is also the best there is. Um, I would recommend you to use R Studio. It's not a must. There are other ways to run R than through our studio. I use the R Studio myself all the time. I like it a lot. So that's my recommendation to you. That's also uh, free. So please, by all means, use both. Install R, install R Studio, and you're up and running. It's going to be used in different ways in our course. At the end of this course, hopefully, it will be your preferred data analysis tool. And you will have learned only a tip of the ear of the elephant when you leave this course. But hopefully you will have seen how you can investigate the rest of the elephant when you keep on to the ear of it. You're in the ear. You can go on from there, right? I don't know who came up with that analogy. Uh, but anyway, we can teach you only a little teeny weeny thing in this course. But we give you access to a portal of amazing stuff if you dig into this R. Now, if you go out there, R fights with Python about the data mining, the data science. Uh, I, Python is also nice. St R is rooted in statistics. I am rooted in statistics. We are rooted in statistics, many of us in our part of our department. Others at the D2 Compute would be Pythoners. Uh, but uh, both of these tools are very nice, and both are open source. We do the R thing, and we love it. it it's really gr growing every day, like everything else. But, 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 but. I don't know if you like this slide, but here it is. It's a brain slide. Giving you a tool like R, it's very tempting to leave the brain somewhere else. Because R can do everything and much more than that. It's, no, I should be, it's the solution to any dream you could have. You, <laughs> you can do that in R. But, God damn it, don't forget this little thing, right? Don't forget the brain. Don't forget to think about what it means. It's not enough in this course to be more rude or st specific. It's not enough just sit down and press the R button and get things done. We require you to understand what you do and to know the formulas throughout and understand everything. So you must think about how you can learn that also. My recommendation, but it's a free world, you can do what you want. My recommendation is definitely to Whenever you do exercises, have a piece of paper next to you. I have to say, I do meet every now and then, not too uncommon, that people only sit in the exercise rooms and I'll come out and check you. I'm not watching you online, but I'll check you in the exercise rooms. I see people only sitting with a computer. Sometimes it might be okay, don't worry. Uh, but uh, many times, I'm saying they come and ask me a question about an exercise I, I didn't look at for two years. And then they sit with the computer and say, what should I do? I said, I don't fucking know. How should I know what you do? Have you thought about what, have you written up? Could, do you have a piece of paper so I can make a bit of reasoning to think about uh, how we should solve the piece of paper? Uh, what's that? Um, hey, 
you, you cannot take real world problems and then sit down with a computer and just like that in R. Here's the solution to the real world problem. Maybe I'm old fashioned, it doesn't work like that for me. If you have a digital version of pen and paper, fine with me. If you can do it without, I'm impressed. So by all means do it. It was not thought that you would be able to do things without brain and piece of paper, right? R is a brilliant, fantastic tool, but it cannot go instead of everything else. Brain, brain, brain. We will use R in at least two different ways in the course. You could call it two different ways. We will be using it, especially in the next couple of weeks. Difficult to see, but this part. It's, since we can do simulations in R, and we'll teach you how to do that more detail later, we can use the R as a tool to understand mechanisms of probability reasoning and statistical reasoning. So we can sort of play around with toy data simulated on the computer just as a way to understand the concepts. Pedagogically, it might be a challenge for you because when do I use it to illustrate something and when do I actually use it as the thing it will be for you when you leave the course, namely a strong probability calculus and even more so a strong statistical analysis tool. We'll try to let you know whether we do it, uh, use it in one or the other way. In the beginning, maybe mostly this and then when we get on the course, mostly as the tool that you can use when you leave the course. And then of course, you might also use this tool to explain your, your uncle or your parent or your grandmother what the beauty of, uh, of the randomness and the understanding of that is. Here is R. You're gonna do this yourself now. It's pretty easy to use. I think I'm going just to go five minutes over time. Here we are. You can download this R code from the material website. You download the R file, you, you, you get the R script file into your version of R Studio, and it's very easy for you to take the codes, there is a shortcut, control enter or control R, or you can use the run button up here. I'm on this line now where I assign the number three to, y, to the uh, variable Y. So I could also go down here and type Y. Well, Y contains the number three. I'm up and running now in this script-based uh, program called R. Um, I could also put in data into R like this. This is C for concatenate. I can make a vector of numbers by this. And then I can check how I had a sample size of 10. The mean was 178 centimeters. The median, here can already see the nice beauty thing that makes it challenging for us to leave the brain at home. Well, he gave me a really weird definition of how to compute the median. I found a function in R that can compute the median. I will substitute the knowledge of this weird thing with the function r and then whenever something i would don't do that think about what it is because you may get exam questions that require you to know the details of this you may also get exam questions that require you to know what the r can do for you right we will put in r outputs and things like that from r in the exam such that you should be able to cope with both you're going to be engineers you should be able to do it and you should be able to understand what it means and what it does. That's what a good engineer is going to be like. So we're ambitious. There is a quantile function. There is a histogram. Let's go to the graphics. Now having shown you how you could use those uh, different plots yourself, and we share everything with you, all the plots, everything from the book, the R code from the book is there for you to play around with. That's the way you work with R. You Google, you find, you steal, you borrow, you copy. You do as little as possible yourself. Apart from when you have to prepare for the exam of the introductory statistics class, steal, copy all you want, but think about what it means. If you know what it means, you can steal along with me. I'm showing you now some of this code in the slide instead. Mean, median is there. The sample variance is there. 
the sample standard deviation, all of these are inbuilt functions, SD, var. Quartiles, there is a quantile function. And as I told you, if you want the quantiles exactly as we've defined them to you in the book, you should use this type option equal to. If you want to read about all the different types of quantiles, go question mark quantile. Ah, that's a good thing. Should mention that for the newcomers. If you're in doubt about quantile function, you write question mark quantile. And you get the help. That's the help. Help is good. Uh, in the bottom of the help, there are some running examples. You can always copy paste examples. Um, and then you can start from there, copy paste the examples, plug in your own data, and see if it works. That's the way to work with R. Histogram is a nice thing, showing the distribution of the data, the frequencies. You can uh, play around with a number of classes to make it look more nice. You could put in a bit of color if you want. It's not so crucial for the stats part of it, but hey, why don't we show you how to make some nicer plots? We can do this. That is kind of the accumulated histogram where all the frequencies, relative frequencies, are added up as a function of x. And I wanted to go to this one before we finish because um, the box plot is a really nice plot to depict, to show a distribution of data. And the box plot is very detailed connected with the quantile and the quartile definitions I've given you because it's basically a picture of some of the quartiles and quantiles. It gives you the zero and the 100% percent percentiles. It shows to you what is also known as the interquartile range, which is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. It shows you the middle 50% of the data distribution. So for these data, 50% of the data were between uh, 168 centimeters and uh, 188 just by viewing. Um, so that's a, diff that's a way of telling the story about the data by the different, sort of showing those different quartiles in one picture, just like that. This is... There's a little technicality here. We are soon finished. I had to put in some option to get this basic box plot given to me by R because if I don't put in any option, the default choice of the box plot function of R is actually a so-called modified box plot. And just to exemplify that, I threw in on top of the own, our own data, the height data, I threw in the basket guy again to see how does the modified box plot react to an extreme basket guy. Well, they will have the extreme guy up here. See that, 235. And then the whiskers are only taken out to the next to last, next to largest observation because the largest observation was too extreme. The definition of too extreme is technical, and I'll not even say it now. It's not important. You can read it in the text. There is a definition of how far away should it be to be too extreme. If it's that, it, it's highlighted individually, so that's the modified box plot, a really neat box plot, that will be shown to you default by the box plot function. I use that a lot. Don't remember to use your brain. Um, and let's finish up by the last question. See who the winner is going to be?
Anyway, good job. Um, congrats to Lonnie. Now is exercise time. Do you know where to go? 45 is an option over here in the corner. Two TAs, three rooms in building 324, 20, 30, 50. One of them don't go there today due to the sick TA, as I emailed you about. And then a single room in building 321. Check your message. I'll visit around to say hello in all the rooms before 5 o'clock. So see you out there and good luck. <laughs>